I have had the Cordus Beko now for about a year and a half and I thought it was high time to maybe give you a little bit of an update on how it is, how it's been, what condition it's in now and show you how it's fared, how a cheap, I think I paid 60 quid for this, cheap Turkish cordless vacuum cleaner stands up to daily use. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? Becco gets a Becco aired at Christmas time 2017 and since then it has been actually our, well it's been used daily, Amy really likes it because obviously it stands itself up. There is no weight in the handle, it does do a good job as long as you don't subject it to massive mess tests like myself and Mr. Hooverlux did in a previous video. really good even since we've had the v11 it's still out it's still being used because amy finds the v11 quite heavy and hard to push so many much much use many many blockages a little bit of wear where shall we start well we shall start actually by taking that off and i'll show you the handle if i can remember how to take it off there we go this forms actually the main suction tube of the machine. We don't use it with the tools. I'll show you the tools in a minute. We have barely, barely used them. And it's not bad. There is quite a lot of you know, rub marks. In fact, they just brush off, look. Rub marks where that sits in there. That's where the machine clips again. Lots of rubbing marks. I dropped it against the corner of the radiator and put a dent in the aluminium handle. The handle grip is okay. Again, it's got some scuff marks on it from where it's twisted over and fallen over. This rubber cap is very annoying. It's supposed to clip on, but it doesn't really. This is where it plugs into the machine, if you remember from the before video. And there is your extension wand. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it is very clunky. I cannot lie. It is not the most finesse of things to use as a you know handheld with reach Dyson do have the edge there on that so now that we've had the two main parts we'll start with this while I can hold it up obviously it's wearing a few battle scars now <laughs> this bit certainly but this is where it sits in here it sits in there and obviously makes the suction Go into the bottom bit, and yeah, it's it's heavily pitted now. <laughs> there we go. Look, lots of wear there, lots of wear on here. Obviously, this is a painted finish, and as we all know, with Hoover's efforts with painted finish, they it it wears off really really easily. But apart from that, on low power, it has some suction. still very good very good indeed let's have a look though at the first stage of the dirt chamber which obviously clips on to the main motor unit and as you can see there is quite a bit of dust sat on the wrong side of the filter there isn't really a post motor filter to speak of this is the battery but there's no I can't get to whatever sits under there, which is the exhaust vent. To really see what's what. But this is the 
top part, which doesn't really get a lot of use with us, it mainly fills up with the fine dust that comes out of here. This is this this doesn't hold the fine dust, this is hold the actual dirt. And it goes on to the filter, which has been washed a few times. Generally does go quite gacky though. I just I I I vacuum it out for evening because to empty it under Dyson V11 actually, because obviously I'm doing 12 vacuums in 12 months, and I've well, we don't weigh the dirt, but I show you what the machine's picked up. I do use whatever machine within reason. Obviously, you couldn't use a dirty fan uprights for it. I use straight suction machines to empty these out. We've got three on the go at the minute because the Tinko's still out. I've still got videos to do on that. Dyson V11, that gets used, and this is still floating around. So, yeah, this is the first, well, this is the Cyclone as you call it, and it's filthy, really. I mean, it's mainly surface dust, but it's filthy. Problem this has, like a lot of machines, if you remember the AEG Ultra Captic, the dirt gets wrapped around the shroud, like so. And I think somewhere in the bag, there is the little brush that you're supposed to use, but I haven't done that. I think I've taken it apart once and given it a proper clean, but you like you, you can see it there look the dust just builds up and it's a right pain to get out because all you can do is take this off so it involves some maneuvering with a thin crevice tool and you get it roughly out and that's about it in here so this never really gets full because we don't use it in handheld much to hand uh, handheld mode too much so that is just light dirt really and that's all clips back into there the filter goes on, and yeah, that's what it looks like after it's had one deep clean in its life, but literally just empty it, tip it out, put it back down. This is the bit that gets the hammer, because this is where all the dirt, that's, well most of the dirt that's picked up from the floor head, goes into, and to empty it you have to twist and pull down. And this also suffers from the floor of all the hair that you can see it starting there. After about three weeks, it clogs itself up because there's so much hair around there that it cuts out the suction. Problem is, you can't take that off. So you can do it like that, or you do it like this. When you take this off, oh, it drops a bit of dirt, and all the fluff is caught around here, it drops it everywhere. This gets absolutely filthy. If you want to pick it all off or put a vacuum on it, it is a bit of a pain. It also has clogged up, might be a bit tricky to show you, but in there, look, that's where the dirt enters. And obviously when that blocks up, oh, I smashed my camera, I can't even get my finger in there. So yeah, from this point on, it is quite a pain, really. I mean, there's a big build up down there, but I think that's just the dirt. So you can't get anything in there, so I can't really clean it out. This is the dust cup. That's fairly standard, really. That's just tip it out, wash it occasionally, I suppose, and then it goes back on like that. In fact, if we put this back in, oh, I'll just put the handle back on because that's what clicks and makes the power go down to the brush roll. This is very good, it does pick up everything you ask. First time as well. Doesn't snow plow. Really is, you know, it is good. I have enjoyed using it. I just found it through the Dyson V11, really. Which brings us on to the floor head itself, which the main bit that has been annoying me is look at the state of the wheels. I mean, we haven't just had laminate. This obviously was used all the way through that carpet that we had down. All the way through all the laminate. It's, yeah, upstairs, downstairs. And there's just very, very loose, wobbly. Look, all the rubber coatings coming off. It's a little bit tragic. Same on the front. These, they were fabric -y wheels, but they've worn down so much. It's a pain. This is coach all right. The strip that stops anything from flying back. If I just take out the brush roll, which has to be cleaned out very regularly because it gets covered in hair. So I'm, I did it quite recently. 
so there's not too much but again you can see it build up there it gets to the point where you can't see those edge edge bristles <laughs> the brush roller is black I mean I, I have used this to clean up after other vacuum cleaners not going to lie it's been hammered I mean I think these they probably do come out but I, I don't actually know how to remove fully the ends of the brush roll it probably is glued in because it's cheap but yeah that is it's just grey and grim same as in there look at that because again we we run this over the entrance mat in the winter and all the damp gets cleaned up so that's currently the state of it and obviously all the dirt runs through this hose up this tube and then exits into there and it blocks up very very regularly indeed but you can't really get anything in there that I, I can't even my little finger goes into my knuckle so when it blocks up you have to remove this screw this screw this screw this screw this screw this screw and this screw and that screw take the top off there's more screws underneath to release the hose then I can basically rod it out or get a vacuum cleaner and suck it through. Not the best to unclog, it has to be said. It didn't happen very often, it's not even when Amy's not paying any attention at all and runs something over. At least it's not like the V11 which clogs itself up just with a volume of dirt, despite the volume of dirt maybe not being that bad. So we'll line this up. Turn it back on. You can see how often I've had to do it. Look, because of the wear to that. <laughs> and we'll put the clip, the handle back on, and the clip back. And yeah, it still works. Don't turn on. It still works absolutely perfectly. The charging stand is covered in dust because it just normally sits in the corner of a room, and it's weird because. <laughs> It's, it is purely 50-50 to charge it. If I was to charge it, I can't just plug in a jack like I can on the Dyson. It's like the Tinko and has to be docked. However, unlike the Tinko, that has to be docked on a wall, it sits on its stand. And this is quite handy because this just sits in the corner of a room, you know, plugged in, out of everybody's way. It also, I've worked out, if I stick this by the oven, I can put the cable up to the unit, and it charges up there. That was before we found this little home, which is now being kicked out of. So that's quite nice. It does dock quite well. Oh look, there's there's something caught under there. Look, obviously that's not been. What is that? Oh, I can't get it out now. But yeah, there's there's something caught under there. Yeah, it's fine. These suction pads stick themselves down quite well and stop it from sliding about yeah you can see where it's been bashing on the radiator from where it sits I said you can put the tools on this if you remember from the it was a terrible before video wasn't it you can dock stuff onto it but then that makes it huge we never bothered with that so it's literally just this and that sat in the corner of the room out of the way. Talking of out of the way, this is the same bag that the tools have been in since the day. We unboxed it really, they are terrible really. This is a brilliant floor cleaner, a terrible cleaner with tools. This is the hose. Oh, it's a bit strange, it's been used. I remember using it to clean a vintage bag out once. And it was okay because obviously it stays on. So what you do is you put the small end into the front. It only goes in one way. Then and yeah, it's not bad. It's a bit stiff. But because I've always had a corded, this is the same with the Dyson V11. I don't use have these tools very much, apart from the turbo head, because there's always a another vacuum around. What else is in this bag? We have the soft dusting brush and it is very soft. Very soft indeed. Too soft 
because these bristles are already really, really flat. That's not through storage, that's how they were. So you basically end up scraping that on the bottom. Any gaps and, you know what I'm doing it there, you can't see it there. Any corners or edges, it just scrapes itself around. I think I might have used this tool once. And what else is there? The dusting brush. Lovely, soft, dense bristles. Really, really nice. Problem is, it does an angle, so you end up literally being on top of whatever you're trying to dust. You can't do it at an angle because you just end up doing that. Excellent idea. Terrible execution. Don't forget, Becco didn't send me this. I paid for this with my own money. So, meh. The upholstery tool, again, it's massive. Haven't used it. This is the, again, it's got a sort of dusting brush bit on. And then you can take that off. I mean, we've used it a bit. There's dirt on there. Probably one of the better tools, but again, it's just, eh. haven't used it. What else is in here? Well, that's not part of it. That's, I've obviously just put stuff in here. Ah, here we go. Maybe it's an angled attachment, so you know one can fit it to the tools and use it. But again, you're still like that. You can't have a nice angle, and again, it's so loose that as soon as you put any pressure on it, you can't do up high. I did try to use this to do the top of the curtain poles once and it, it, it just hits the ceiling. So yeah, again, great idea. It's almost as if I thought we need to do something like that. Let's do it. What else is there? Oh, I've got a stubborn Dyson brush. This thing, oh my goodness. This is the crevice tool. And it has been used quite a lot. But that is so narrow that it just clogs itself up as soon as you I mean you can see look I've tried to take it off before just so I've got a wider bit it is just awful I mean it's okay you can hear the machine struggle with it but yeah okay it's just, I mean that 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 brush really needs to come off for a start and anything and everything gets caught up that is just for dust you can't pick bits off anything at all and then the last tool which should be the better tool is the this small turbo head this is what you're supposed to use for your sofas and for the stairs and for everything else <laughs> and it's just massive it is awful let's undo it and take the brush roll out the brush roll again it's so big that you have to there we go there is some hair on it that hair's probably been there for a year from what I've done the stairs or the sofa the brushes are really soft in fact you can see how little I've used it look how clean that is in there spotless absolutely spotless yeah it's awful you could you you could legitimately use this as the main carpet and well, the main carpet turbo brush. You really could. Seems to have been quite loud as well. Yeah. I mean, it articulates to there. To there. In a size comparison, you may as well just use this. In fact, I have. I've flopped this up onto the sofa before just to quickly get bits off. Yeah. It, clunky is very much the word. It's, as I say, I'll be honest, I sort of wish, because I think I went for this specifically because it had all of these tools. But I'll be honest, if you could buy one of these without any of that, none of that, if you could just pick this one up, this bit here, it would be superb. That's the other thing as well. You have to make sure it is locked in place. Otherwise, and that's why the handle's got all that paint on it. If you do that, it flops itself 
you won't do it now, you watch. It does have a habit of falling itself down. Why don't you do it? There we go. You have to knock the pivot, otherwise it does that. And then falls over. This is very... It, it's sturdier than it looks, and then you can wobble it about a lot before it does go, but... There is no build quality, really. It is a cheap machine. So, anyway, this is how it looks now. Yeah, it's it has use. But it does still perform. So, ah. Ha, there we go, look. Oh, 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 oh. Taking that off just to say how empty it is. Look, has proved and showed a point. That big glob of fluff that we picked up, look, it's sat there. It's that leaf that's done it. All sits in there, look, it all hangs around here to a point. Certainly when the bin gets full, it does suddenly go onto there and you can't really tell especially since Amy doesn't really know doesn't really pay any attention to it she just uses it until it breaks and then tells me it's broken but hey ho so we'll put that on the floor what I think we'll do is just do a little bit of a little bit of a house demo it's got charge on it it was fully charged at the time of taking it off charge to do this video and we'll see how much it picks up because it is really nice to use It's out of charge. Well, there we go, folks. It seems that it has run out of battery or overheated after three quarters of the house, which is a little bit odd. Doesn't do that at home, but then at home, of course, we've got laminate flooring. Doesn't take that long to do it. Yeah, that's a bit warm. Doesn't take that long to do our house, really. So, yeah, it's a bit difficult to know how to recommend this. I think it's, I think the battery is gone. Obviously, it's had a year and a half of use. As you can see there's lots of fine dust in there now. That wasn't there before. And if we look in here, look. It has picked up a lot. That'll be a nice big chunk of dirt. This is very nearly full. Brush roll doesn't groom the best, I'll be honest, but you know, it picks up the bits. That's the thing with this. It picks up, it gets the dirt up. It's not a full size corded cleaning replacement like the B11 tries and very nearly succeeds to be. 
There we go, let's give you some electricity. It is just a cordless vacuum cleaner, really. Not one that you would use to do a whole three bedroom, semi detached house. But for sitting in the corner to grab for quick pickups. Yeah, the battery's dead. Back man for a few seconds longer. I do highly recommend them. They are also quite cheap. They're only about 45 quid, 50 quid now. It's not bad. But for my one, I think now it's entered semi retirement because we now have the V11 and the Tinko for now. I think it's possibly time to give it a full refurbishment, a full life reset, so it can continue being mediocre for somebody else. So until the after video, that's it for the Beko. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry about the slightly impromptu and not very decent house demo battery just only lasts about half an hour really but I'm, I'm sure it was fully charged it did come off on red but it's been on charge all morning maybe Amy ran it really dead before I grabbed it this morning to bring it here and it, it, it does need an overnight charge it, it isn't the fastest charging thing but for 50 quid what do you expect so until the after video for this you will see this then however for me I Shall see you soon. Bye bye.